Insurance companies hate risk. This is why they eliminate most job applicants because they look like a risk. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to land an adjuster job by taking control of your own story. As insurance adjusters, we need to be covered by insurance. We're writing estimates, climbing ladders, walking on roofs, and mistakes can happen. What are you going to do when something goes wrong? Kaplik it. CPLIC, or Kaplik for short, is an insurance company for independent adjusters, formed by independent adjusters. They understand our job and the potential problems that can arise. If you want help understanding what coverages you need as an independent adjuster, head over to cplic.net slash adjuster TV for a free download that will explain the common types of insurance for adjusters. Hey IAs, it's Chris Stanley of IAPath. You know how most new adjusters cannot break into the industry? They struggle because companies have two to five years worth of experience as a requirement. And how can they get that experience? But don't worry, at iPath, we get that experience waived with our 90-day online mentorship program. If you're interested, head over to iPath.com. To get a job at an insurance company, you'll need to be focused on making yourself that safe bet that companies want to hire. You'll have to learn how to craft your personal story and resume to be the best option for an insurance company. You did craft a good resume, right? If you didn't, I suggest you grab the Adjuster's Resume Playbook by heading to ipath.com slash books. There are things though that we can control and those things we can't. We can't control what's on other people's resumes, but we can control what we can honestly say about ourselves. Don't be intimidated by the work you're gonna have to do. You'll have to put in time to get a job, but it'll pay off. When you consider how much time people put into getting a four year degree with no guarantee of a job or career, I believe you'll find these tips are beneficial for you. First off, know your story. You've been documenting your professional history, skills and accomplishments in your resume and your online profiles. Needless to say, you should be familiar with every word on that piece of digital paper. We pushed you hard in other videos and in our books to use numbers to describe your impact on your previous employers. And you should be able to explain all of your bullet points on your resume, where those numbers come from if, if you are asked. When you're putting your resume together, you can't just forget everything that's on it. Everything on your resume is fair game for the interviewer to ask you about, so know it. You can pretend that someone will ask you about each line of your resume so, and be prepared to explain that line and how you came up with any of the numbers in under two minutes. One minute would be even better, but become good at being succinct and transparent. Your life is an open book and you should be proud of it. You should be prepared to tell your story that's prevented, presented on your resume. We mentioned that everything on the resume is fair game, but everything that isn't on the resume is fair game as well. Hiring managers, as we've mentioned before, are creating a story in their minds about you and your life. You've got to know the narrative you want to present to the person that's going to interview you, which means you need to understand your story at an intimate level. I'm not talking about simply knowing the facts. Obviously, you know that you graduated from Boston College. I'm talking about understanding what your journey says about you. Why have you made decisions to jump from one career to another? Why would you leave a job that was paying you quadruple what adjusting is offering? How did that job prepare you for this position? Why does adjusting make perfect sense given your experience and skills? Now, I personally have many questionable things on my resume that some may see as a negative, but in my mind, they play out as a nice story. At one point, I was a regional slash national operations manager of a paintless dent repair company. And I made great money, nearly quadruple what I typically earned as an adjuster, but I left that job to start iPath without knowing whether I'd ever make a dime. 
why leave such a high profile and high paying role to start an adjusting mentorship company? Now, I think you'll agree when you hear my answer that it makes a good story that is compelling to any future employer looking to hire me. So here's my story. I enjoyed my time in that role. I learned a bunch about the relationship between third party vendors, body shops, adjusters, and insurance companies. It gave me a perspective about how we all gotta work together for the insured, especially during a catastrophic hailstorm. What I discovered about myself was that I most loved the moments when I was working with the catastrophic adjusters on our team. I realized that my heart it was with adjusting. And when I resigned, I resigned because I wanted to get back to my roots of being an adjuster and to bring my newfound perspective with me to others in our industry. I wanted to help others discover the great life that adjusting had provided for my family and I. I wanted to help others claim their life. If you enjoyed this video, you'll love writing along with us on Adjuster TV Plus. Myself and a growing list of industry experts will show you how to handle claims with confidence. We know it's hard to find a working adjuster who's going to let you shadow them, which is why we let you write along with us on Adjuster TV Plus. Check it out for seven days absolutely free at ipath.com slash TV. Now I could have chosen a different way to present my narrative. I could have told the same story a myriad of different ways, but I understand this narrative because I spent time looking at my journey and dissecting why I did things the way I did and how this story helps me get where I want to be. Now you too need to understand your story and find themes and commonalities in your decision-making. Having a cohesive narrative is a great way to be able to explain your story in a compelling way. It'll also make you more confident in yourself. Now, tell me about yourself. <laughs> After you walk into an interview room, make a few introductions, shake hands, exchange names, and try to get comfortable in your seat, the lead interviewer is gonna lean forward and say something like, so tell me about yourself. Now your head is gonna start spinning. You think about how you love time on the lake, your kids, and you think about your secret stash of poetry you wrote when you first got married, the unfinished novel, and your brief yet unproductive musical career. But that isn't what they wanna know. Let's reset. We've discussed how a resume is your advertisement previously. Now here in this interview, you're pitching yourself as a great fit for the job. And what the interviewer is actually asking you is saying, hey, tell me why we should hire you. Now, before you rehash your resume and throw a bunch of random facts about your life, consider this framework I'm gonna give you that'll help you better answer this question. When someone says, tell me about yourself, you're gonna give a two and a half minute summary of not only your past, but also your present and your future, allotting 30 to 45 seconds for each section. Brian Jackson, a recruiter at Polikoff Recruitment Solutions, shared this framework with myself and John Bachman, and I couldn't type it out fast enough. It was the perfect solution to an often confusing and open-ended question. It also helps us develop our narrative for our entire career and how it relates to the reason you're sitting in that chair interviewing for the job. So your past. Here is where you'll share in 30 to 45 seconds the type of work you've been doing and what you've learned through your experiences. Well, I've spent time working at a furniture rental company on the sales floor, helping people who are in difficult situations make where they live feel like a home. One day, a family came in who lost everything in a fire and was waiting for the insurance company to settle a claim. As they shared their story, all I could think about was the guy whose job it was to help get them paid from the insurance company. They called him an adjuster, and at that point, I wanted to know more. Now, we look at some jobs as being boring and unrelated to claims, but when a story is crafted about how it sparked an interest in adjusting or how it helps you in adjusting, maybe your path doesn't exactly correlate to adjusting, but that's okay. The key is to find the narrative. Do you love helping people who are hurting? 
is research and investigation your thing. Finding these narratives are critical to you sharing your story about your past, your present. Now that you've established your past, we need to establish where you currently find yourself. Think about your current role and how it connects you to where you were, your past, and where you want to be, your future. Continuing our example from the previous section about the past, I'll craft a present that is a stepping stone from the furniture rental job to a future of being an insurance adjuster. After I heard of adjusting, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I did some research online and found out that most adjusters needed some college education. I went back to school and finished up my associate's degree while working at a warehouse. Then I obtained my adjuster license through Adjuster Pro Online pr using their pre-licensing class. So the future, this is the dismount and we need to nail it perfectly because it'll make a lasting impact on the interviewer. Focus on where you want to go in your career as it pertains to the job you're seeking. Don't share your grandiose plans for starting your own insurance company five years in the future. Keep it grounded in the job you're applying for at this moment. Here's the example continued. My desire is to get back to helping people who have had a loss in their life. I want to have a career as a property or casualty adjuster. Ultimately, I'd love to end up in the field working catastrophic claims so I can help those who have been devastated by large scale events. That's why I'm very excited to be here today talking with you about this opportunity to start my career in claims with your organization. Is there anything you'd like me to expand on? Boom, you can drop the mic. Standing ovation, okay, may maybe not, but delivering a properly crafted narrative has the power to leave the interviewer speechless. My guess is they'll be smiling when you're done. No matter your narrative, the most important objective is to set the tone for the rest of the interview. The interviewers won't have to speculate about your intentions or what your work or education history says about you. You explained it all already as it pertains to your story. You can reference your story during future questions as well. When someone throws you a curveball question like, why'd you leave your last two jobs back to back in less than a year? You can look at them in the eye and answer confidently. As I mentioned earlier, I was working at the furniture rental company and I wanted to go back to school and I couldn't coordinate my work schedule with my school schedule. I only had one semester left to get my associates. So after I completed it, I left the warehouse job to pursue adjusting. Your narrative is the backbone of everything you'll do. The real question becomes, how well do you know yourself? Take some time to craft your narrative and you can do this by constructing and rehearsing that two and a half minute answer to the question, tell me about yourself. Controlling the narrative from the get go with a good resume and then being able to answer, tell me about yourself is a great way to make sure you control your narrative and your story and give you the best opportunity at landing a job at an insurance company. If you need help getting an insurance company job, I suggest you grab a book John Bachman and I wrote called The Insurance Company Adjuster's Playbook. It'll help you learn how to get hired and promoted by an insurance company. You can find it on Amazon or by heading to iapath.com slash books. iPath is get off the couch, quit watching the Weather Channel, wishing you were gonna get work, and get out and experience the world because you're a working adjuster type of training. Head over to iPath.com to find out more. iPath, claim your life.